Today I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to 9 a passage that talks about the greatness of our salvation. I've been talking about the goodness of God and the greatness of God. Uh, today I want to focus our attention into the greatness of our salvation. How this salvation that we have experienced uh, is not a simple uh, human wishful thinking it is a divine act of god and it has eternal consequences and not only it has eternal consequences it has amazing benefit and blessings for us in this time during the journey that we have on this earth so let us read this passage from first peter uh, chapter 1 verse 3 to 9 Let me read first. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can ni- never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are sealed it by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time in all this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed though you have not seen him you love him even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the end result of your faith the salvation of your souls Peter is possibly writing from Rome to the believers in area scattered uh, called Asia Minor back then and today it is Turkey several churches were scattered throughout the province of Asia Minor and to them he writes from Rome where persecution was raging suffering was coming all kind of direction and uh, Peter as the the main figure among the apostolic leadership was worried about these believers so he wrote these two letters to these believers so that they will live their life worthy of the the greatness of salvation they had received he was afraid or worried that they might fall into temptation of backsliding or they might compromise their convictions or they might all together abandon the faith or they would be discouraged or depressed these are all the areas where peter was afraid to strengthen their faith to show to them the greatness of their salvation he starts this letter and then he touches few very important things in verse 3 onward let me go through number 1 he says we have been given birth into a new and a living hope new birth into the living hope these are scattered jewish believers and gentile believers some of them must have been scattered from jerusalem some of them must have been expelled even from rome so they were living in foreign land as sojourner as people aliens and strangers to them he is telling you may have come to a stage in life where there seems to be no hope but i want you to know that you have been given birth into a living hope and this birth has come by the mercy of god god loved us so much he was so merciful to us he abandoned all our sinfulness and he welcomed us into his fold and he himself has given us this birth how did he give this birth he said in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead how did we get this salvation we got this salvation because of the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead in other word 
Jesus came, he died and he rose again. That is the heart of the gospel. And when these people had heard the gospel, they accepted. And when they accepted the gospel, the, the power of God that resurrected Jesus from the dead is the same power that brought us back into life because we were dead in our sins. Very clearly Paul says in many other places that we were dead in our sin. There was nothing we could do to inherit the salvation. But God in his divine mercy, he exerted the same power uh, that he did for the resurrection of Jesus Christ into resurrecting our dead souls into a living hope. So this is not uh, man-made salvation. This is not our doing. We have not come into salvation by accident or by our own effort. It is the divine hand of God, divine mercy of God, divine grace of God leading and guiding and bringing us at a point where we were able to respond to the gospel. And when we did at that time, then the resurrecting power of God gave us this new life within our hearts and we became new creation. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, says Paul in 2 Corinthians 5.17. And oh yes, same way Peter says, you've been given birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then verse 4 is one more amazing uh, statement is and into not only we have been given birth into a living hope we have also been given birth into an inheritance and our inheritance is some kind of a blessing that we inherit from our ancestors or father or mother if you have good parents they will leave some inheritance for their children you did not earn your parents earned our parents had some property and uh, if they didn't want, they can sell it and do it away. Some bad parents will leave debt for their children to pay. But some godly parents will leave an inheritance, even though the children might not deserve. In the same way, when we were resurrected from the deadness of our soul into the living hope, we were also given birth into an inheritance, a living inheritance. What kind of inheritance? Look at the description. That inheritance can never perish, spoil or fade. These three verses, I mean the, these three words define the nature of our inheritance that is living. It is not some kind of a, a dead inheritance or some kind of a thing that doesn't, it, it has some life in it. Perish has something to do, some green vegetable, you buy the vegetable and if you don't take care of them, they perish, they spoil, another word, or fade. Uh, most likely, Peter has in his mind about the prize that the runners win in those days or the, the winners in the game receive, that crown of leaves, olive crown. And uh, that crown fades away. He will say the similar word again. But we are given birth into such an inheritance that crown never fades away. That does not get rotten or spoiled. In other words, it is still alive. Our inheritance is alive and active and living. It has life. It is not dead. That's an amazing statement, an inheritance that is alive and that remains forever, never perish, never spoil, never fade. And this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Now, when you think about heaven again, there is a temptation to think about heaven in such a way that heaven is so far away. The heaven and earth, heavenly life and our earthly life may appear to be so disconnected that has no relationship with us. Oh, this is an amazing inheritance, but what can I do? It is not with me at this time. It is kept in heaven. So many times we have believed in such a way, thinking that in this world we have nothing but suffering. But when we go to heaven, we have an amazing inheritance kept. So after we die or Jesus comes, then only we will enjoy this inheritance. That's the 
common belief we have because according to Greek philosophy and Hindu understanding, heaven and earth are two different places. They can never meet. They have no relationship. But the Bible does not talk about heaven like that. Jesus is with us. Jesus is in us. Jesus is around us. We are clothed with Christ in one way. But at the same time, the Bible says Jesus is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. How can that be? If heaven and earth has no relationship, no correspondence. Heaven is not so far from the earth. The only thing is, heavenly reality is one kind. Earthly real reality is of different kind. Right now, we are worshipping here in our earthly reality, but heaven is right with us at this time in the spiritual reality. So this inheritance is not some faraway place or after we die. This inheritance is accessible for us right now because heaven is with us. Christ is with us. God is with us. Even though with our natural eyes and natural senses, we cannot comprehend. One day, when we talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ, we think about Jesus coming from faraway places. The Bible talks about his appearing, his revealing. That means when Jesus comes or his time for the coming comes, he will simply appear. Right now, we cannot see, but that time we shall be able to see him. So he is not coming from faraway places. That time heavenly reality and earthly reality will be completely one. At this time we have earthly life and we have heavenly life at the same time. But we don't see from our physical senses. So this inheritance is not something that after we die, this inheritance is for us now. It is still living and active and alive, so very much accessible for us. So we've been given birth into a living hope. And Peter says to them, don't lose your hope. Even though you may have lost your country, you may have lost your property, houses, they were expelled from different places, persecuted, harassed, haunted down. Don't lose your hope. And then next chapter he's going to say, you are the royal priest. We may have no king in this earth. The king on this earth may have come against us, but don't lose your hope. You have been given birth into a living hope and an inheritance that is also living. Verse 5 is another powerful statement. He says, not only are we given birth into a living hope and into a living inheritance, but now we are kept into that living hope and into that inheritance by the power of God. Let me read. Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last day. Look at the word. Salvation ready to be revealed means the completeness of our salvation. That our bodies, we will have a resurrected body. When Jesus appears, we will have resurrected bodies. And that will be the revelation of the salvation. So, until that day, we are shielded by God's power. We are protected by God's power into the living hope, into the living inheritance. God himself is keeping us safe. He gave us new birth and now he is keeping us safe in this world until that day when we shall not need protection anymore because we will be with God and God will be with us. Heaven will not be a faraway reality. Heaven will, heaven will be a everyday living reality. So the blessings of God that are kept in heaven according to Ephesians are not some faraway distant place reserved only after death. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places does not mean those blessings are accessible only after death. They are accessible right now through Christ because we are with him. He is with us. We are in him. He is in us. So heaven and earth is meeting together right now in our life. As we come in the church, the church is the meeting point of heaven and earth. And you, when you accept Jesus Christ and you are given birth into a living hope, you become a connecting point 
of heaven and earth but when our complete salvation comes when jesus comes again our common language heaven and earth will not be a different reality it will be a one reality so this is an amazing uh, picture of the greatness of our salvation now the problem comes in verse 6 If we are living in such a heavenly life if we have been given birth into a living hope and our inheritance is living and active ever present we lack nothing whatever is needed god has supplied it is a living and a fresh it is never faded and never spoiled and never perishing then what shall we do when we suffer verse 16 in all this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial up to now he is talking about heavenly realities but now he moves down on earth and he says you may be suffering in all kinds of trials that means there is no limitations of what kind of trials we may suffer in many many different areas but the reason we do not scum or we do not uh, perish or do not abandon our hope is because god himself is shielding us he is keeping us protecting us we don't even know sometime how much god is protecting us uh, last night and you know, the night before not last night the, the day before yesterday uh, about 2:30 a dog was barking like a k- crazy she does bark but never like this before and uh, for some reason i g- got up and went out to see and she was unable to breathe uh, anyway i just saw everywhere no sign of nothing at all morning when my wife opened the window she opened the curtain just uh, next to our pillow the window was open and there was a long stick with the hook and a big knife was left and then when i went to see she said come and see and i saw a mosquito net was also cut knife at with the stick and a mosquito net was already opened we had a uh, this uh, box mosquito net and uh, can you imagine you are fast asleep over your head there is a knife at night and uh, for some reason uh, every night she barks she barks with cat and even rat also when she sees and so we never took kimi seriously but that time i said let me get up when i woke up there was some noise but i didn't pay notice only after when my wife was cleaning the room then we were oh my goodness there was a knife over our head and uh, by the grace of god uh, i woke up and didn't even realize because without glasses i can't really see many things uh, clearly so the man must have seen me and we we turn on light always inside light our lights are on the man is in the dark uh, we can't see outside the point is we never know how many time god protect us physically and spiritually as well how many time we may have fallen into temptation how many time we may have been discouraged and depressed and gone away from god sometimes we lose all kind of hope but god in his divine mercy he has his own hand holding us protecting us into this suffering therefore knowing that we have been given birth into a living hope knowing we have a living inheritance knowing that god's power is always available to protect me no matter what kind of suffering i go through i have only one response and that is to rejoice say i will rejoice in my suffering not because i enjoy the suffering but because i know my god is able to protect me I know my God will shield me until that day when heaven and earth comes together in my life and I no longer have to suffer in this world right now I may have to suffer in all kinds of suffering trials uh but in the midst of these trials and difficulties and suffering lord help me to find joy help me to give you the glory 
the reason why this suffering come verse 7 these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold which perishes even though refined by fire may result in praise glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed you see the word revealed again it doesn't say when Jesus comes again or doesn't say when we go to heaven the biblical picture of heaven life is right now we are connected with heaven right now we are connected with christ but there will come a day when this suffering will cease sin will be done away death will be given away uh, go, go, gone and we shall be completely absolutely united with christ heaven and earth will be a one reality and until that day comes uh, we need a genuine faith now just as hope is living just as inheritance is living our faith has to be living as well faith cannot be dead faith faith cannot be uh, yesterday's faith it has to be a present faith now i am believing faith is a continuous action it is a continuous life is if i believe yesterday no that's not going to be enough or i may believe tomorrow no now it doesn't matter what happened yesterday it doesn't matter how righteous i was how wicked i was what i am doing right now is more important so this faith the precious gold or silver also cannot compare with it this faith has to be proven genuine how by suffering suffering will come to test our faith and in the midst of that suffering we lift our hand and say god i cannot go through this suffering alone you say you will shield me you will protect me you will defend me and he will defend he will protect why because verse 8 and 9 is wonderfully concluded though you have not seen him you love him uh, jesus said blessed are those who believe in me even though they have not seen he was talking to thomas thomas you saw me and you still can't believe but blessed are those who don't see with their physical eye and yet believe because jesus is not far away thomas didn't understand the disciple didn't understand Look, master where are you going show us the way all this jesus i am the way the truth and the life that's not some distant places jesus is right there his i am here i am everything if you are in me you are at the destination also you don't need a new way i am the way you don't need to do anything else you have the life with and uh, i am the truth so in the same way we believe this amazing savior who saved us from our deadness in sin so you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe two things you love him even though you don't see you believe him even though you don't see so faith is the one that will overcome the challenges of life the sufferings of life the sadness of life in all these things so finally he said you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible glorious joy for you are receiving the end result of your faith the salvation of your souls the end result the end product is what matters and that is the salvation of our soul when he talks about the salvation of our souls here he is talking to the believers already they have believed in christ but he is talking about the end result that is when jesus is revealed when heaven is revealed when earth and heaven become one at that time we will have this glorious joy because until that day when we put our trust in him he will shield us and protect us and when we are living in this world also we have this amazing opportunity to access the inheritance that inheritance include eternal life your temporal blessings also your temporal uh, whatever the needs we go through those things are included in the blessing we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places no matter whatever you need whether material or spiritual they are not fading away they are not spoiling away and they are not going to be destroyed they are forever how do we access we access by faith we access by love 
we love God, we love fellow human being, we believe God, and we believe Him who will meet our need, He will protect us, He will defend us, He will be there to see us through. And when He comes, when heaven is revealed, we shall be saved forever and ever. That is the greatness of salvation. So don't be discouraged when you are suffering during this journey until the day we see Christ. Don't be discouraged when you see lack and need or failure or human opposition or persecution. Uh, maybe physically or financially or socially we may have to face so many trials. But uh, we should not lose uh, our focus away from Jesus Christ and uh, keep our faith in him. Even though we don't see him, we believe him. Even though we don't see him, we love him because he has given us this new living hope and this hope and inheritance, they are still accessible for us from the earth. So with that, I'm going to close our message here and... Uh,